All right, for this screencast, I'm going to go over uh, images. So I don't think that images, nope, it's not, is a function. So I'm just going to make a function called images. And uh, basically, I'm just going to go over uh, in some simple image processing techniques that you can do. So um, I'm going to grab a uh, image. Um, let's do something safe, like flowers. Uh, images. So, okay, let's see. Let's grab this one. Okay, so this one's 1920 by 1200. That's not too big. I'm going to save this to the desktop. Flowers-02. So if I, uh, let's see, put this over here and put this over here. If I go to my, uh, if I go to my desktop, that's annoying. Okay, let me uh, move some stuff around real quick. Okay, so what I did was I put the flowers image that I just downloaded and the images M file into a folder called image example. And so I'm gonna go back to uh, to MATLAB here. I'm gonna hit LS and so I'm gonna see into image example. And so there you can see that I've got flowers and images. And then I'm gonna go ahead and edit images.m. And so it should bring this up. Okay, so say I wanna plot this image, right? Well, so the first thing you wanna do is just bring in the, the data file. So I'm gonna do data equals I am read and then the image so flowers dash o2 dot jpeg like this okay and I'm gonna hit f5 uh, I'm gonna throw in a uh, clear CLC and I close all here hit f5 again run it okay so if I type in whose let's go over this data real quick okay so I've got data that I just imported and notice that the size is 1200 1920 by 3 okay so let's go over these two numbers here if I go back to Google Remember that the image is a 1920 by 1200. So if I go back to MATLAB, 1920 by 1200. So those those uh, that, that aspect ratio was flipped, but it's still there. Now why are there three? So if I do data all comma all comma one, it's going to spit out a ton of numbers. I can't really even tell what it is because there's so many, right? But basically. I have a three-dimensional matrix here, and what it is is it's the red, green, and blue part of the image. Okay, and then the class is a U and eight. Okay, so I'm gonna make a note for myself. So first, let's go over plotting the image. Um, then let's go over the three layers, and then we're gonna do red. Um, blue and green like this I think it's R is it RBG or RGB we're gonna we'll, we'll find out I I, I kind of tend to forget it's not really a big deal I know red is the first one okay and then finally let's go over uh, uint 8 okay so first let's go over plotting the image okay so I'm gonna make this I'm gonna call this guy uh, uh, original and I'm just gonna do I am show original Okay, so if I hit F5, it's just going to bring up my image. Great. If I click this doohickey here, it's going to tell me that at X is 281, Y is 128. I have an RGB, so it is RGB. I have 164, 83, 17. And I can move this cursor around. And so if I go to say, let's go to like a, a redder region, I've got 192, 1353. So if you notice, the G and B are smaller. If I go to yellow, now I've got red and green are pretty high, and remember red and green put together is, is blue, right? And so if I go to a dark region down here, notice that the, the numbers are, are really small. And so that's kind of getting into um, uh, these, these layers here. So let's grab the red, and so that's going to be original, all comma, all comma, one. I'm going to grab the green, original, all comma, all comma, two. And then the blue, original, all comma, all comma, three, like that. Okay, and then I'm going to just do, um, I'm going to make a figure, and I'm going to do I am show red. I'm going to drop another figure down, I am show green. I am show, or sorry, figure, I am show blue. I hit F5, and now I should have three images here. And it looks like it actually converted every single one of these, um, to to grayscale okay and the reason why it did that is because of of this u and eight stuff going on down here so what i really need to do is i actually want to do red equals original but then i'm going to set red of all comma all comma two equal to zero and red of all comma all comma three equal to zero that way 
red is still a n by p by three. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just comment out all of this, and I'm gonna do figure, and then I am show red. Okay, and hopefully that will work. Okay, there we go. Now the now the photo is totally in red, right? Because what I did was is I, I saved the original and then I zeroed out the green and the blue. So instead of calling this red, let's just call this um, eye color, and then do eye color and eye color eye color and so if I want to do say blue right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero out the red and I, I forget is it, is it RGB again yeah it's G so G, so if I want green I'm gonna zero out the first and the last one so here let's do this so one equals red two equals green and three equals blue all right so then if I do eye color so this should give me since two is still non-zero I should get green okay there we go now I've got green and if finally if I zero out one and two this should give me blue and there we go now I've got a blue image okay all right so that's going over the three layers so now let's go over uint eight okay so what's happening here if you notice is that so this is a blue image right so red and green are both zero but blue is a number and so if you look at these numbers the numbers look like they go from zero to something okay well uint 8 means 8 bytes okay so if I do 2 to the 8th minus 1 that's 255 so it means the maximum number of, of uh, decimals I can represent with 8 bytes is 255. So it means that uint 8 goes from 0 to 255. So it means that 0 is black and 255 is full color. Okay? So we can do some we can do some interesting things here, right? So if I do if I uh, say um, let's see. Let's just make a equals zeros, um, ten comma ten, and I'm gonna do u and eight. So I'm gonna convert this because remember zero zeros is, in, is a floating point precision. If I do this and I do figure, I am show a. What am I gonna get? I'm gonna get a black little square, right? Because it's zeros. Now what if I do zeros plus two fifty five? Now you can't see it because there's a, a white square in there, right? So I could do, I could concatenate some stuff and I could say take, let's take A and B, uint 8 zeros, 10 comma 10, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to smash these side by side like this. And so now, hmm, that's still kind of hard to see. Let me make a C here, zeros, 10 comma 10, plus 255. I'm going to concatenate the C in there. And so now what we should see is that'll just give me two white squares on either side. So let me do a black square, a white square, and a black square like this. And see, so now it's hard to see, but you got a black square, a white square, and a black square. And so that's what, what these are doing here. So um, let me pause this and, and think about what I want to do. Okay, so let's. There, there's some interesting things you can do with this. What if I want to convert my original image to black and white right <clears throat> so let me comment this out comment this out comment this out and so now I just have the original image here right if I do black and white is and let's just say I, I did what I did last time where I said original all comma all comma let's do three let's do the blue um, in the image and I'm gonna do figure I am show black and white okay now if you look at the image the contrast is sort of messed up right so if I do here and here the contrast is messed up like it's it's like really dark here but like really bright here but that's because what I did was is I only am plotting the blue right the the third the third axis is blue and so I'm only plotting the blue in this image and there's not a lot of blue in here so then I get like dark here so that's not exactly what I want what I really want to do is I want to say take the red in the image add it to 
the green in the image, add it to the uh, blue in the image, divide that all by three, and then save that as black and white. Now watch what happens. Hmm, something happened again. What What is going on here, okay? Contrast is still messed up. So now let's look at uint8, okay? If I take uint8, if I do 100 plus 200, what do I get? 300, right? What if I do uint8 of 100 plus uint8 of 200? What do I get? Hmm, that's weird, right? That's because uint8 can only go up to 255. So we actually, in order to do this black and white conversion, we actually need to do some really weird things here. First, we need to convert each one of these to a double. So I'm gonna wrap a double around here. So that means that I have all the precision that I want in this, in this calculation. Finally, in order to plot this correctly, I need to make this a U and eight again. And so now when I do it, boom, there's my black and white. And now if you look at it, the contrast is fully preser preserved, okay? So let's go through that one more time. So because this is a U and date, this is a U and date, and this is a U and date, and I add them all together, I'm gonna saturate my bytes and everything is gonna add up to 255. So instead I convert them all to doubles, add them together, divide by three to get the average, and then convert that to a U and date. And so if you go back over to here and you type in who's, if you look at black and white, notice that black and white is still a 1200 by 1920, but it's not by three anymore, it's just by one. But the class is still a unit date. Now the cool thing about this, and since this is a 1200 by 1920, you can do some really neat things here. You can, you can drop a figure down and you can actually mesh black and white now. And so now, hmm, didn't like that. Uh, let's see, C data must be double. Okay, so basically you have to do mesh double. And so that's gonna give me, remember black and white is a number between zero and 255. And there we go. So if it's kind of hard to see, it looks like my computer is lagging. But if I look at it from a top down view, there is my uh, image um, rendered using mesh color grid. And, and you have to keep in mind, right? It's it's this is 1200 by 1920. So I have, what is that? 2,304,000 doubles. All of that times, you know, eight bytes per number. I mean, it, it's like, you know, 18 megabytes just to represent, you know, this image here. Um, so that's still really cool though. I mean, we can do uh, probably something easier. It could be like contour like that. You could probably see that a little bit better. Uh, my computer's dying. Oh man, that looks really freaking cool. You can see all the contours of your flowers. I mean, you can do really, really neat things uh, with these images. And again, if you click here um, onto the plot, hmm, let me pause it and wait for my computer to catch up. Okay, my computer lags too much for this image. Okay, so this actually brings up a really important point. What, what if you want to shrink uh, the image? Well, one thing that you can do is, uh, let's see, there's probably better ways to do this. This is like the, uh, I just wanna make sure shrink's not a function. I I'm gonna do uh, original, except I'm gonna go one skip to end, one skip to end, and then all, all of them, right? And I'm gonna make skip equal to, let's say, let's do a factor of 10. I'm gonna do figure, I'm gonna get rid of this guy, I'm gonna get rid of the black and white, and I'm gonna do I am show shrink like this. And so basically, there you go, look at that. So now it's it shrunk, And but if you look at it, it's like super pixelated now, right? If I do, if I make it 100, man, now look at that. You probably, yeah, that's, I mean, like super blurry. You can't even see that. So it looks like 10 was pretty good. Uh, and that's pretty small there. And then if I do hues, if you look at shrink, it's 120 by 192. So I've, I've just shrunk the image like that. Um, and then at this point, you can do really you you can do that thing I was telling you about. You can do mesh of uh, shrink, and I guess this needs to be a double, right? I think we already got that error. And so let's see, didn't like it, uh, or did it? Uh, matrix dimensions must agree. Ah, that's right. So um, when you do a mesh, you need to you need to flatten it. So you have to essentially do this copy. Um, black and white shrink 
and then all of these originals need to be the shrink because you can't have a, a three-dimensional matrix in mesh shrink and honestly you should just make this a function I think I did I think I made this a function and so this will be a black and white shrink well and there we go check that out so there's our there's our there are flowers in a mesh grid uh, pretty neat if we do say surf oh, where's my where's my code there's my code so instead of mesh do surf and then look at this top down yeah so now you almost have like a uh, like a pixelated version of uh, and then and the other thing you can do is then you can start changing color maps so you can do like color map bone and that'll give you like that you can do color map I think jet is the standard but you can do uh, autumn or summer, you know, whatever. Um, you can get in there and get get whatever you want. And you, now you've got really cool things. If you get rid of the edges, you'll get this nice, like, smooth little plot going in there. Um, I think that's that's probably it. I, I I think there's a function called image. Um, image X Y Z X Y Z uh, image will kind of do some interesting stuff. But I think I've gone over the major things. I mean, red, blue, green. Um, black and white, you went date from 0 to 255. Um, uh, it turns out that you can actually, well, let me just clear CLC, close all here. If I do A is rand int uh, 10, 10, 1, hmm, 2. Yeah, okay, so if I do that, that gives me a 10 by 10 and zeros and ones. If I do a I am show A, um, what that'll actually do is wherever there's a zero, it'll put a, a black square, and then wherever there, uh, can I zoom in on this? I've never done this before. Ah, uh, that stinks. Uh, let's do. Well, let's, let's just go for gold here. Let's do um, a thousand by a thousand. Uh, I am show a too big to fit on the screen. Okay. Oh, that, there was there was. See, that's really cool. So you got like all this like randomness, right? So every time there's a zero, you get a black dot. And every time there is a one, see there, RGB 111, because what it did was A is actually a double, but it just defaulted one to 255, uh, or it, it, it's doing like a uh, like an analog black and white thing. So you could do like a, uh, uh, what is that thing called? Uh, pixel maps, is it pixel maps? Hold on. Okay, I figured it out. Yeah, rasterize. It's this kind of thing. Like, you could take this image and, like, rasterize it like this. So, like, every, like, you know, you could do a scale from 0 to 255 and, and give it a dot. That'd be that'd be pretty neat. Um, things like that. Anyway, I think I've uh, drawn this out long enough. Uh, if you have other questions, you know, post it in the comments below. And I will see you next time.